Welcome to my video on UFOs and how they work. Today we're going to talk about what's inside the UFO and how it flies. Um, if you haven't already known, the TR-3B was suspected to be and been working on in the Air 51, and it is based on what I'm talking about today. It's uh, where a super ferro mercury-based fluid is rotated inside of a coil in the center of the ship which creates a anti-gravity field which makes the spaceship about 89 percent um, less than what the gravity is so it takes away most of the weight and I've done research on different blueprints on the internet of UFOs and they all are misleading as you can see None of these have any types of coil inside of them. Nothing that what I've been researching like. Um, except these. These here. I'm getting closer to what I'm talking about. These are talking about spinning electron flow into a spiral vortex. But this. This blueprint is the most accurate I've found to date. That um. If you look closely, you can see there's spirals, a vortex spiral inside the center on the lower part. Here, here it is highlighted for you, so you can see it better. Now here it is normal again. As you can tell, it's a spiral shape inside the UFO, and that would uh, explain what I'm talking about better. Now onto the the coil inside the UFO. Uh, Marco Rodin came up with this idea, and uh, I think many others did, but he he mainly got credit for it. He actually figured out the number uh, stuff inside of it and how it mathematically how it works. Here's a picture of how one would look like if you make one by by hand, a small one. And here is a uh, vortex in and uh, shows you how it forces gravity gravitons through it and there's there's actually been some experiments to prove that when you run energy through this coil that the the inner part of it's active and even the outside part of it shows strange readings and uh, other scientists have done research on superconducting coils that have given off some gravitational forces but they said it wasn't enough to continue researching further because it wasn't promising but that's just a lie because they don't want us to know about all this technology that's it's amazing and uh, emissionless noiseless and pretty much the perfect vehicle transportation device there is. So, here's another picture of a coil here. This is one of the best ones I can find. Now, I'm going to talk about how I think it's made and all the research I've done about it. I'm going to tell you what I know about it. Um, the wire in it, coiled around it, I think it has to be the most efficient wire almost closely to zero resistant but not zero resistant because it there's no such thing as zero resistant wire but it would be a perfect wire um, created in a special factory probably not man-made um, wrapped around the, the cylinder the loop with a machine and all these uh these engine reactors would be built on a manufacturer line probably not on this planet but uh yeah the inside of it now the liquid inside of, inside of it I'm going to talk about now is a super magnetic ferro fluid it is uh mercury based I've done my research on it and nobody really knows what it is but they know that it has to be uh, a 
at least 150k and uh, 250,000 atmospheric pressures and it revolves at 60,000 revolutions per minute or 1,000 revolutions per second and the being mercury freezes at very low temperatures you'd have to create a type of antifreeze mercury that's also magnetic um, so it's, it'd be a superconducting liquid that when you run electricity through the coil with the liquid inside the cylinder it would revolve around and around and around to the point where it it reaches a maximum velocity which is probably close to the speed of light and it creates this bubble of uh, space time around the ship and it, hi and it jumps into hyperspace but to contain this liquid going at these speeds inside this container you'd have to use um, quasi crystals it's 12 times harder than diamonds this has been proven and and going back to the subject where the liquid is a uh, low temperature there is a uh, compound they found that at high pressures it's at 164k it's mercury thallium barium calcium copper oxide that's the the only mercury compound they have so far at that that low temperature so I think they have this technology and they acquired it maybe through alien um, confiscated UFOs from crashes and uh, but the technology is is still being researched I don't know if they perfected it or not in the T3, T3RB plane but uh, the the ship would have to have a quantum mechanical computer like, like a supercomputer based on photonics where you use photons instead of electricity so and this has already been proven and this is um, underway under construction scientists are trying to improve this technology further because it would open up a gateway to new new endeavors new all kinds of research new quantum computing and in the in the ship, I think that if anything went wrong, they would have tiny nanobots to go and repair everything, because that's just too much to keep up with by hand. Um, now, onto the powering of the mechanism, you would have to either power the mechanism through electromagnetic waves in the atmosphere, in the ship's outside hull would be made of also made of quasi crystals and quasi crystals also act as an antenna for energy and it soaks up the energy then it would be put into the super coil inside the machine so it would power it and have enough power but interstellar travel long distance travel between galaxies and other planets you'd probably have to use a antimatter reactor or some sort of advanced technology like that but the only thing that puzzles me is how do they move forward, backwards, up and down. I know the superconducting coil creates a hyperdimensional space bubble around it, which means it can move through space instantly without traveling through space. That's how come it can travel so fast without the G-force affecting them. Otherwise, the G-force would just tear any living creature apart at those speeds. Um, so... That's my research, and I hope you like it. Please leave a comment, and there's uh, some links over in the description to other videos that describe this better. And thank you for watching my video and listening to me. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my videos. If you like UFO videos, it's over there in my video section. Just check them out. Thank you. Bye.